We're going to be in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 27. We're going to highlight verse 27 uh, this morning. So uh, once you get there, students, give me a whoop whoop. It's pretty easy. Just open it up. It's right there. It's page 1. So, all right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. There we go. Late. There we go. Verse 27, it says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Who created man and woman? God, okay. Who created you? That's right. God made us. But I, I, and this is where I want everybody to pay attention because this is something that we cannot overlook. We should not miss this very important point. There's a key factor in how God made us. God made us in his own image. God made you in his own image. That's a big deal. Because um, as many of you know, I, I, I'm a carpenter. I love to work with wood. I, I love building things. But there is one thing I have never done. I have never made anything that looked like me. I don't know what I'd do with it if I did. But God made us in his own image. Now, is there anything more special? Is there anything more important? Is there anything that is more beautiful than God saying, I want to make man and woman. I want to create them in my own image. The first gift God ever gave us was making us in his own image. So students this morning, kids this morning, God made you. Make no mistake that you're not an accident. You are on purpose. You are with purpose. God made you. And if we could just sink that in just for a second, God made you. You're not a mistake. It wasn't just something that, it wasn't just an explosion. God made you. And all your intricacies, all of the beautiful things that is you, that are you, God made you. Now, um, as we go along a little bit more, um, I want to, uh, to read this next verse. Um, well, we'll come back to it. But uh, I want to, to ask you something else. God made you, but even, even more and beyond that, parents, I want to ask you a question. Do you love your kids? Don't worry, they're not looking. Do you love your kids? Most of the time? Okay. All right. Yes, of course. It's okay, give them, give them a hug, it's all right, it's okay, you can give them a hug if you want to. Kids, right here, looking line on top of my head, kids, do you love your parents? Yes, they're like, yes, give me candy, no, I'm just kidding, all right. You love your parents? Okay, kids, give your parents a hug now, go ahead, give you, there we go, it's, it's so sweet, it's beautiful. Go ahead, give your parents a hug, it's all right. Dad won't let me. <laughs> He's had a cough lately. You got to keep him away. All right. Did you know that love is not something we invented? Did you know that love wasn't something that we were sitting around one day and, and we, we just like automatically know how to do this? We love because there's a source of love. There's a source of knowing how to love. And this is what I want to read. Uh, actually, I believe uh, Colson read it for us. 1 John 4, 19 says this. We love because he first loved us. I got to tell you, in all my life, I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I've ever learned. Is that I, in and of myself, am not a source of love. I'm not the beginning point of Christ-like love. I'm not the, the beginning point of the God love that I've known. I'm not the starting point. God was the starting point. He loved me so much. That's how I know. That, that's how we learn to love. 
Kids, that's how you know how to love, is because God loves you. That's 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved, first loved us. Number two, God loves you. If I teach you nothing else this morning, please, please hold on to that, kids. Students, hold on to that. God loves us. We learn about love from him because we know he loves us. That's number two. The next verse I want to share with you is 1 John chapter 4. If you want to turn there, 1 John chapter 4, we're going to be in verses 9 and 10. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. I always encourage my students, if you hear a verse, turn to it. If someone is sharing scripture with you, turn to it. Verse 9 says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Let's stop right there just for a second. That word manifest. Anybody, kids under the age of 10 know what manifest means? Kids that are hearing my voice at all, period. Manifest. What's that? Remy? What does manifest mean? Nope. Buried his head in the chair. He's gone. A list? Okay. That is actually, yeah, that's a different meaning for the word manifest. Yes, you're right. That's good. Man, I thought about that. But, uh, but made manifest, that means that he came alive. He presented himself among us. In this, the love of God was made manifest in us, among us. That love came alive among us. It showed up. It was presented in the most perfect and beautiful way. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son to be the propitiation. Now, once again, another $5 word, propitiation. Kids, can anybody tell me propitiation? If you can pr pronounce it, you get a point. Propitiation. Propitiation. There we go. All of you get a point. Good job. Close. Half a point. Propitiation. Son to be the propitiation for our sins. That means he is the one that takes our place. But this is, this is kind of bigger than that. Now, this is a verse that you should all know. Even the adults, you'll know this one. John 3.16. Go ahead. You're good. Keep going. Awesome. Great job. Ellison Lusk, guys. Awesome. Well done. You know, and, and I, I was going to call for volunteers, but dude, he didn't, that's awesome. That's perfect. Well done, brother. Um, John 3.16 is the most beautiful picture and succinct picture uh, that we could paint, especially for our kids. I love hearing kids, especially that are learning scripture, some for the first time, and those young words, those young voices say John 3.16. For God so loved the world. I love that so. So loved the world. Compelled was his love that he gave his only begotten son. And this is one of my favorite things about John 3.16, at least the way I learned it for sure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Aren't you glad that you are whosoever? It's, raise your hand if you are whosoever. That's every one of us. 
That's me. I'm so glad that I am included in that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? So, so far, just to recap, we have in our first, number one is God made you. Number two, God loves you. And then number three, God wants you to know him. I don't, I can't think, I can't imagine of a greater, absolute, full understanding of how badly God loves us, how God, badly it is that God wants us to know him, that God wants to be us to be with him, than he gave his only son. Some of you probably know, most of you probably know my son over here, Remington. Hey, Remington, you want to come here for a second? Come here. Nope. Nope. You sure? You don't want to come up here? There's too many people. Too many people right now. You'll get over that around age five, six. Yeah. But uh, Remington, I love him so much. I love my girls so much as well. Anna, I don't know if you noticed up here, she's got a little bit too much of me in her. She's up here. She's like, just watch me. Watch this. This is, this is, that, that's her position, and she does a great job of it. You noticed. A little bit of Ronnie in that one. And Zoe dancing it out for sure. But I love my children so much. I can't imagine it. But the thing is, I know it because God has done it. I feel it. I know it. I am part of that because God sent his one and only son for me. And it has changed my life forever. So that's what we learned from John 3.16. God wants you to know him. So kids, so far, if we are catching up, we're staying in, um, I guess, all together. God made you. God loves you. And what's the third one? He wants you to know. Dude, he's got it over here. There we go. It's on the back of the seat. Oh. Those are the kind of quizzes I liked at school. <laughs> you gave us the answer. Never mind. No, it's okay. It's okay. He wants you to know him and spend eternity with him. He sent Jesus to die for us. Now, children, if I could just once again just kind of, and, and I say children, but I mean all of us, if we could understand with a childlike heart and eyes, if we could simply understand that every lie you've ever told Every mean thing you've ever done, ever will do. Every little piece of candy, every little thing you've ever stolen, every toy from the church nursery. That's my kids, I'm telling you. I've never seen this car before. Oh. We made him bring it back. God loves you so much. Jesus gave up heaven. And he came down to live on this dirt ball. To live on this sweaty, I heard uh, from the Jordans where they were in the Grand Canyon, it was 110 one day, right? I can't imagine. And plus, sleeping outside for part of that time, too. Ah. And they didn't have air conditioning whenever Jesus came to earth. But the beauty of it is he did it because of the love that he has for us. Jesus took our place. How many of you uh, kids have big sister, big brother? Nice. Okay. How many of you adults have big sister, big brother? As you grew up with a big sister, big brother. Awesome. Yes. I have three older sisters. So I've heard what it's like to have a big, uh, have a big sibling that takes up for you. I've heard what that's like. I never experienced it. Um, <laughs> But um, if you could imagine just for a second, because of something wrong that you've done, that big sibling saying, no, no, I'll take the punishment. As a kid, just think about that just for a second. For me, my daddy whooped us, okay? 
For those of you that don't know what a whooping is, it's whenever this little leather part that holds up your britches, it gets pulled out, folded once, and becomes an implement of improvement. <laughs> and I remember one time that, uh, and, and she knows Jesus now, but um, my sister Corey told a, a lie on me that I had done something horribly wrong. She told my dad that I had hit her, which I had not done. I hit the tree right next to her. But it scared her. This is when we were, I will say, I was, I was 11, she was 12. And she told my dad, he hit me. She, she had the waterworks going and everything, you know, the, the dramatic. So my dad, I will protect my little girl. Come here, son. And she stood right there with her arms folded, tapping that foot. I, I don't make this stuff up. This is real. This was my life. As my dad took off his belt and whooped me. Now, a good big sister, first of all, wouldn't have lied on me. But just imagine for a second, not just the punishment for something like that, but the punishment for all of our sin. Everything that you've ever thought of, ever done, never will do. Jesus stepped in and said, I'll take that punishment. For the youngest, who is the youngest? That we is Keats? Keats, are you the youngest? Is Keats the youngest? Not in here right now. He's eating, or his, having an early lunch. Um, all right, Keats. Ke well, uh, no, 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 neither. All right, they, they're having a group lunch back there. All right, good deal. All right, uh, we have some of our youngest to uh, some of our older uh, in here, guess what? God, God sent his son to die for every one of you. Every generation. And here's the thing. We get to tell others about that. We get to share that. And, and guys, this morning, it is my honor to share this with you. That God wants you to know him and he gave you a way through Jesus. He gave you a way through Jesus to spend eternity with him. And there's nothing more important that I could stand here. I'm not going to tell you how to do your taxes. I'm terrible at it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to uh, not even tire your shoes. I still kind of get mine wrong from time to time. But the single most important thing I can teach you and tell you and preach to you is how you can know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's every single person in here. You don't age out of needing Jesus. You don't get, I pray, you don't get too used to hearing the gospel that you don't need to hear, need Jesus still. Because I, I want to promise you, on Judgment Day, they're not going to ask you how many Sundays did you go to church. They're not going to ask you how many years you spent in the same church. How many years you went to Sunday school? It's one question. It's one question. Do you know him? Do you belong to Jesus? Are you covered in the blood of Jesus Christ? That's it. There's no other way. There's no other way whatsoever, only through Jesus. So this morning, I want to share with you a verse, Romans 10, 9. Many of you know that, but kids, tonight, or I'm sorry, tonight, feels like tonight, is it darker in here for some reason? Anyway, Romans 10, 9, this morning is so incredibly important. I want everybody looking at me real quick. Kids, seems like we have more kids over here, but no, there's, they're all over the place. Kids, look at me real quick. Can I get all your eyes real quick? Romans 10, 9. You've heard this before. You've heard this before. Your parents, I pray, have shared this with you. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. That's for all of us. God sent his son to die on a cross for your sins. He made you. He loves you. And he wants you to know him. So this morning, like I said, if I could tell you anything in the world, it's that Jesus, he died on a cross for your sins. He wants you to know him.